Here we are. It's uh, EBW 2020 podcast, and we have such diverse women that participate in EBW 2020, all kinds of backgrounds. And, and with me is uh, Isla Onik, and uh, your company, where you are the CEO, co-founder, and president, is In Vivo Sciences. And I'm going to be very honest. You're, what you do as a company is so technical that it's hard for me to do it justice, describing what it is you do. But I'm fascinated that you're a person who went from being a ballerina to biotechnology. <laughs> that is not something you hear about all the time. How did that happen? I think it's uh, uh, the patience and to make a difference in combination with the, what I have to do after I lost my father from a heart attack. And I like dancing, but uh, creating a company is a dancing in a different form. You dance with many partners, you dance with life, ups and downs, but you have to always be graceful and do what you need to do, which follow the music. And for me, is music is with my partners, the chosen partners, to find a solution for the heart disease and uh, our solution was to actually create heart tissue from the directly from blood cells or urine sample or from the cells, which is stem cells, uh, directly for to be able to do drug screening and preventing cardiotoxicity or uh, three-dimensional disease models. Simply, I want to transform the healthcare, and simply, I want to heal all the hearts. And it is a big, hefty goal and hearts of the children, hearts of the men and women are very different and specifically different for their genomic composition. And I would like to heal the hearts personally, precision medicine comes from that base and we can do it today. I'm so happy that my dance forever keep going and on and on. The, uh, it's interesting that I imagine too, you made some great comparisons of dancing and business, but I also immediately think of the work ethic mm -hmm. that you put into, I mean, you don't just go on stage and be a great dancer, mm -hmm. and you probably did it for 15 years minimum before it became great. Does it feel that way in business? I think true, nothing, uh, nothing, is, nothing comes easy. And, and there's a book called Tipping Point. I think I, I respect the author because he described much better than I could. You have to put the hours and time, but also that there's no guarantees. So it is more than a decade for me that dance okay. was never stopped. Uh, even the music stopped. I had to dance in my mind, in my soul, because I had to go where I need to go I have to make it happen. And it's a big, hefty goal sometimes. There are lots of oppositions, lots of naysayers, lots of people will say that I wanna compete, I wanna make you not be here, go away. But I cannot, because till you achieve, till you make it happen, the dream will be there. So uh, it is a lifetime dance for me. Now, I'm, I'm very sorry that you, you lost your father to, to a heart disease. Or, mm -hmm. And, I mean, at that moment, did, is that where you said, I have to change the course of my life to work on that? Or, or how did that unfold? No, it wasn't that moment. It was that moment of desperation when the doctor told me that he has nothing else to do uh, to help him, to save him. He has only eight months to live. He had a myocardial infraction. It was a simple thing normally, but he had three times uh, and he never took care of it or pay attention. The doctor saying to me that no thing that they can do at that time, unless they change the whole heart. That was for me, and how many hearts you have? Can I get one? Right. And it was not available. Today even, there are only maybe 55,000 or so hearts available, and how many people? Number one killer in the earth is heart disease. Cancer is very, very important, but still it is a very costly and leading uh, disease is heart disease. And, and underserved. Rise, I'm sure, right? Underserved. So I didn't know what to do then. I accepted the situation. But when I uh, told myself, I will have to find, because he, he said there is nothing he can, he's a doctor. How could it be? Mm -hmm. He is greatly science and everything else, all these things in earth. I said, we need to find a solution. How can I bring people? 
to find a solution, and how can I be serving towards it? I met two wonderful scientists, Dr. Elliot Elson and Dr. Tetsuro Wakasuki. They are the founders of the invention, and they were talking, they were friends, and one is a good dancer, and they were friends, and they told me that they want to have this dream. This is a decade ago, that they would like to create the heart tissue to do drug screening and cardiotoxicity. And I said, I like to help. And that was the start. And the help I was giving from the business side, from financing side, from funding, bringing the people, and co-founding the entire concept, patenting it globally, was the part that I was doing, orchestrating that, is the, the, what I did. But actually, okay. I didn't know that I was actually being part of the solution yeah. then. I'm very curious um, because the medical environment is so different from country to country, and this is a global audience mm -hmm. that you're talking to here. Do you, are, are you getting traction in, in, in certain countries much more easily or pushback in some where it's hard to break down the door to even show them what you're doing? I think cardiotoxicity is a problem of the world. It's not a problem of the United States, but the great invention and the NIH was here that, that I got support from originally. So I'm very thankful American Heart Association was the original uh, invention, the supporters of the scientists. So we have the problem of heart disease globally, and U.S. has been an, an inventor and a fourth runner of that with the invention we patented globally. Uh, countries are all open, though they, you need money. You need money to expand and to give a global accent, a, a access to the, the invention. And you need a business partner coming forward because otherwise the rare diseases cannot be all, uh, you know, be served. And so you need to be available. Availability comes with access to the capital and access to the whomever have the need. All foundations will benefit from this because childhood cancers, muscular dystrophy, sarcoma, uh, are the number one, three foundations. I can see that there are children, women and men with these diseases, and we can provide the 3D disease models for them, the tissues for them from the patient. And this is cheaper, more effective, but I am not available to them. Globally. So you're at this point as a company, you've broken the ground and are I believe doing, so. <laughs> doing what you need to do. You just have to have the funds and the voice to go global. And partners. Partners, partners. who need this, including foundations, including uh, United Nations, including anyone wow. who I can be served and who I can go and provide my tissues. These are three-dimensional tissues, cardiac tissue, skeletal muscle tissue, airways, or disease models like muscular dystrophy, uh, the, the cancer models, wow. the bigger than this, COPD, sarcoma, those are my next goals. But right now, muscular dystrophy is we are working already. Oh, wow. Well, very interesting. It's a pleasure to meet you. It's my pleasure to be here. So I'm so yeah. thrilled and excited <laughs> with wonderful people being surrounded yeah. and yeah. Being, being here and welcomed. I'm thankful and grateful. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you.